Think of a place of incredible beauty, a place where the ancient and the modern coexist in almost perfect harmony, a place where people believe a good friendship begins with a good meal, a place of untold treasure and untold beauty. Put them all together and you've got Greece. Hi everybody, I'm Chuck Henry and welcome to this edition of the Travel Cafe. Up we go. It's a picture postcard setting. And just by looking at it, you might be hard pressed to tell exactly where you are. Hi everybody, I'm Chuck Henry and welcome to this edition of the Travel Cafe. And we're in Greece, a land where the ancient and the modern coexist in perfect harmony. And a good friendship begins with a good meal. In the next half hour, we're gonna show you some of the hidden secrets of Greece. Greece is an experience, it's not a country. Greek people, Greek food, antiquity, landscapes, the sea. You can do a lot of things in this country. You can do nothing and have a wonderful time. Uh, you can uh, explore all your senses, all your senses. I love this land. I, I, I was born and raised right here on this land. I went all around the world and I was only operating on 80%. When I came back, I'm 100% me. Thank you. <laughs> Olympic Games of 2004 repositioned Greece in the world map. Athens, as you said, is a very modern country and a country that respects the history but moves towards the new centuries. And this is Greece, and this is Athens. Especially here in Athens, you, you look at the ruins and you wonder, gee, if stones could only talk, think of the stories they could tell. Especially the ruins right there behind me. Now, they're not the most magnificent in Athens, but they are among the most important. Because there, some 500 years before Christ, men first got together and decided an issue by vote. That's why the Greeks say that's the birthplace of democracy. Greece is where your roots are. Culturally, I'm talking about your culture. It's stemming out of Greece all the way. From here all the way to the Pacific Ocean, that's European, Western culture. This is the beginning. It's fun to look at it. We have so many antiquities uh, uh, in uh, Greece. For example, you can play golf next to a temple. This is in our uh, common daily life. The antiquities, the history. Where are we now? We are right in the Plaka, which is uh, the oldest and most, let's say, famous and popular spot of the city of Athens. Uh -huh. And that's where Athens actually started. So it started right here? It started exactly around the foot of the Acropolis, 3,000 years ago. Wow. And it's a very popular district, very touristic. You find among the ruins, yeah. modern buildings as well. There's a combination of both. You find restaurants, you find temples, you find marketplaces, you find just about everything. Yeah, that's one of the interesting things about Athens, that you find the old right next to the new. We try to combine them, you know. Yeah. This is really something that I think that we managed to do quite well. I don't know if there's anything that says as much about what Athens and indeed Greece has become today than just to take a look around this ultra-modern Olympic stadium and it is really quite a masterpiece of architecture. And of course, when you talk about masterpieces of architecture, you talk about the Acropolis and the Parthenon, and the two kind of live in harmony here, and nowhere is that more apparent than just by taking a ride on a subway. What is true about Athens is that the modern city is exactly where the ancient one was existing, okay? That means that all of these buildings 
are built above ancient ruins. So once you start to build a subway and you go underneath, right. you will discover everything from the ancient times. That's why it took us so many years, you know, to decide to build the subway. The idea was given already at the beginning of the 20th century. But every time they started digging, they were discovering something from the antiquity, whether a temple or a theater or whatever. While they were digging the tunnel for the subway system, the construction workers came across a real find. It was an ancient well that apparently back in the 4th and 5th centuries, this is B.C., the inhabitants would dump all of their used goods like pottery, clay pots and all. And this is a magnificent photo that shows exactly what they found. Take a look at all these pots, not just hundreds, but thousands of them. Each one was carefully cleaned and cataloged and is in the museum today. Athens needs the subway. 700,000 Athenians use it on a daily basis. So they came to a point where they said, for Athens, if it's going to survive, it needs a subway. So they decided and they built it. No matter what they found, of course, underneath, they went on. These small urns were discovered in graves, graves of women, because the urns contain, they say, perfume. There are 23 subway stations here in Athens, and each one has been transformed into a mini museum with either antiquities or modern art. Of course, we have to remember this is a subway, and as it turns out, it's the most practical way to get around Athens. For about $1.25, you can ride the subway all day, connect your hotel with every major attraction you want to see. Quick, convenient, don't have to worry about the traffic. Visit the Acropolis, okay? This is a must. Perhaps one of the most important museums, the archaeological museum. Walk through the placa, okay? Go swimming. The beach is only, you know, six miles away from here, okay? And come and have a meal in the placa, which is really very lovely. I think this is the best we have in Greece. This is one of the more than 3,000 islands that you'll find in Greece. Now, many of those islands you can actually get on a plane and fly to, but the rest, the majority, you got to do it like we're doing it right here. You get on a boat and out to sea you go. We're in the northern part of the Aegean. This is the island they call Skopelos, or the blue-green island. Green because 50% of the island is virgin forest, and blue, well, that's the color of the Aegean, kind of nature's masterpiece right here. It's a dream, an island which is covered with pines, and the pines go down to the beaches with turquoise waters. This is the island. If you come from the port, you know, with a boat, right. you come inside the port, you can see all the houses. They are really nice, traditional ways. One of the most unique and really charming things about Skopelos are these very, very narrow streets. And actually, they served a purpose because where I'm walking right now, this used to be a fort well above the harbor. And the reason the homes are so close together here, you could almost walk from rooftop to rooftop, is because, well, that's exactly what they did in ancient times. So when the pirates would come and uh, pose a danger to the residents, there's about 3,000 people who live here in Skopelos, in order to escape, they would go up to the fort and they would just walk from rooftop to rooftop. To live in the island, is uh, you are more calm and you enjoy every minute of your life. We can move to the city and live more comfortable life, but we don't like. We like to live in the island and we like to make the island so nice and so beautiful uh, to make more and more visitors. That's important for us. If you've been to Greece before or it's your first visit here, one of the things you're going to notice right away about this island is that it is so green in comparison to all the other islands. In fact, they say that this is the greenest island in all of Greece. So that means you can just take wonderful little walks and hikes up to the top of a hill like this one, and you'll find some marvelous things like this small church, which brings us to another interesting point, is that Skopelos is said to have a church for every day of the week, 365. Now, some of the structures are quite small, like I say, like this one. We can actually walk inside and take a look. And others are quite lavish, like the one that's downtown that was built in 400 AD. People uh, were very religious at the old times. They built monasteries 
with uh, Byzantine uh, icons. It, it, it's uh, incredible, especially the monasteries. It was uh, the place that uh, they went for their name day, for Christmas, for Easter. All the li their life was around the, the days that were festivals. This is what I would call a hidden treasure. You know what that is, hidden treasure, a right. little secret. Yes. But now we tell everybody about it, and now they'll all so. come. <laughs> You'll have to be making lots of pies. <laughs> We have to tell to everybody to come in our island. Yes, and if for no Enjoy other reason, island. you must sample one of these pies. The round pie is stuffed with uh, 17 kinds of herbs from the mountains of uh, the island. The ingredients that uh, we'll tell you uh, now, it's for about, uh, you can make about 11 uh, pies. 11 pies. Okay, we need uh, one kilo uh, old proposed flour. Okay. Okay. Nice one. Uh, we need uh, half a uh, wine glass olive oil. Uh, we need half kilo goat milk uh, feta cheese. Uh, we need one uh, teaspoon salt and half glass vinegar. Uh, the water is just to help us then to make the pastry. Yes, we need also water. This is it? No, yes, that's it. That's it? Yeah. Okay. So easy. <laughs> okay. First of all, in a large bowl, okay, mm -hmm. mix flour. And we're going to get 12 pies from here. About 11. 11 pies. Yes. Why make one when with, you can make 11? With olive. Okay. And wine again. Here it goes. Uh, also, we can put salt. Salt. One teaspoon. So then, uh, uh, knead thoroughly eight in water. Okay. Uh, by a spoon, uh, a tablespoon. Okay. Until. Now this is going to be very, very thin. Yes. Until the that. dough uh, be uh, soft and elastic. Do you need a bigger spoon? Or not? It's okay. And one of the things about this pie, it is so thin. The the dough on the pie. How many of these pies have you made over the years? <laughs> many, many. <laughs> <laughs> so when people try the pie for the first time, their reaction? I think it's very easy. It's not... I loved it. Yeah, it was it's so not difficult. Good. It's very easy mm -hmm. to make it. For a rolling pin, you're just kind of using... It's almost like a broom handle or a stick handle. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, right. Special for this. Special for this. Yes, okay. yes, yes. I want to tell that pastry. We can cut pastry in eleven pieces, yeah. and then uh, we can uh, save them in eleven equal-sized balls, mm -hmm. and uh, then to um, put plastic wrap and leave for one hour. You let it sit for an hour. Yes. Okay. Put oil over entire pastry. The cheese. The cheese, feta cheese. Now you're just going to roll it over? Yeah. You just keep rolling? Yeah. This looks very, very easy to do. Yes, right, yeah. Deceptively so. So we make it now in a shirt. Okay. A round pie. Our pie is ready now. Now what okay. happens? Okay. So Deep fry in um, sizzling uh, hot uh, sunflower uh, oil. So deep fry in yes. sunflower oil. Yes, right. For how long? Until golden brown. We're ready now. We'll put the oil. Just put oil in a big pan, a fry pan. Right, yes. It's quite a fire we got going there. We'll put our pie. The oil is ready. Our pies has a golden brown color, okay? And now it's ready. Come on up here. Okay. Ooh, let's try this here. And it's ready to eat? Yeah, it's, so it's very nice. It's ready to taste it, to enjoy it. So you just eat it with you your see fingers? The color, or it's, yes, usually yes. 
for fingers, of course. I had one of these earlier. <laughs> Ah, this nice. It's ready. One small piece, see once. She likes it. Cesaresi. What is this sweet woman's name? Poselene. Alexandra. Alexandra. Alexandra? Yes. I bet she makes a lot of pies, huh? I tell you, this is the great thing about Greece. You just run into the most marvelous people. Absolutely sweet. And everybody wants to share something with you, and fortunately, what they want to share is food. It's perfect. All right, we'll be back with more of the Travel Cafe here in Greece. Well, thank you in just a minute. So stay with us. Surprise, I didn't know you could speak English. Your English is very good. You should have told me that in the beginning. Now I want to show you something that few people have seen. According to Greek mythology, Apollo, the sun god, and Diana, the moon goddess, were born on the same island. And as we stand here at sunset, you can look across and see that island. It's Delos, the birthplace of illumination. I think about the islands, this is the gift of God to this country. We have 3,064 islands. This is the official number and it's about 200 of them that are inhabited. And each one of them, although they may look alike, they are not. In each one of them you find something different. Different food, uh, sometimes different music, uh, different dressing and customs. Uh. So the Greeks, you know, it's almost inconceivable to spend a vacation without going to one of these places, to one of these islands. Although Mykonos has been around for hundreds of years, it's only within the last 50 to 75 years that it's really become a tourist mecca. In fact, of all the Greek islands in the Aegean, this is number one as far as tourism. Why? Well, it's most recognizable because the buildings are white, the shutters are blue, people like to party day and night, and almost anywhere you go on this island, they want to feed you. It comes from the old times that we have to receive a stranger best way he can, as if he was better than us. So it is, you know, this tradition does exist. It is in the heart of everybody here. Thank you. Thank you. Mykonos is the town that never sleeps. And let's say it's uh, 3 o'clock in the morning. No kidding. And you want a good sandwich? Well, this is the place to go. Come on inside. It's kind of an interesting story about this sandwich shop, too. How long have you been making sandwiches here? 19 years now. Now, we were saying that if it's, uh, if it's 3 o'clock in the morning yep. in the summer, you can get a, yeah. a pie or a sandwich here. Of course. That of seems course. a little odd to me, that it right. seems so late. Oh, you're in Mykonos. <laughs> <laughs> it's a sandwich for a lot of people right here. I, oh, that's really tasty. And at this time of the morning, Perfect. It's really crazy. You're going to find people from all over the world. If you want to come only to work and to have a nightlife, it's a different path. If you want to be here, to live here and to work here, it's a completely different matter. This is a pie. And yes. The sandwich is so special. Is this cheese? It's, yes, this is, we call it trovolia. It's a, a unique cheese that you can find it in Mykonos. It's very difficult to find it because uh, there are only few uh, families that they make it. Uh -huh. And uh, if you come to Mykonos, you have to taste it because otherwise you don't see anything. This cheese is uh, sweet. It's, uh, well, yeah, sweet. it is sweet. And we put onion and dill in this pie. And it's the traditional uh, cheese and onion pie of Mykonos. And it's only found here? Yep, only in Mykonos. You can do anything you like. I mean, uh, you can come here with your family and have uh, quiet and peaceful uh, holidays. Or you are, if you are young and you want something uh, special at night, yeah. and dance and drink. You know, this is really crazy, isn't it? So I mean, really you have to understand that here in Mykonos, the party doesn't start until after midnight. That goes for the meal as well. I mean, here these people are dancing. It's 12.30 at night, and they're about to sit down to a steak dinner. This is really some island. 